Hello, I'm Nathan Etherington, the Program and Community Coordinator here at the Brant Historical Society. Welcome to our Season 2 finale of Archival Discoveries, where we open documents in the museum to learn and discover something new about Brantford's history. During March, we've been exploring Brantford's industrial history, and today we are going to focus on the Steel Company of Canada. So we have one solitary envelope on the Steel Company of Canada, and it also uh, mentions Stelco. So uh, we have an instant recognition of what this uh, relates to. Here we see one of the most interesting things, a photo from 1938 of employees, and below someone has kind of drawn a rendition or outline silhouette of every single person in the photo and named every single person in the photo in 1970 and notes who has died, who has uh, left the company, who uh, retired, and who is still working at the company. Uh, however, this is the plant in Gananoque and not in Brantford, but it's still an interesting piece to kind of look at. So uh, another one of the things that they do is advertising booklets like these. So we see their, their kind of branding on the bottom, a date, September 1953, so we know when we're doing things. And uh, here they're profiling uh, Brant's Monument. So again, we see uh, some people retiring from the, uh, from the company as well as some people uh, being appointed into the company, uh, a lot of uh, directories. Here's the, the Brantford works. You can see kind of the advertisement there. And here is uh, the fountain that's in uh, Lorne Park. That uh, memorial still in Lorne Park. And uh, one of these photos uh, that we have of the Gillen sisters, uh, one of our favorites. Again, we see uh, an example of what Brantford looks like uh, at this time period in the 50s, downtown Brantford. That's uh, right at the corner of Colburn and Market Street. Um, the, a fancy telephone uh, operating system, of course, highlighting that part of the history, as long as the newly built Bell Building in Brantford. We uh, see uh, some things about uh, women in the workforce as well. And then just kind of highlights uh, some of the people in, in the business and in the industry. Some of the weddings that have happened over the past year and uh, some of their uh, employees. And then uh, the Henry Street works as well there, uh, mention about that. So uh, it gives us a sense of what the company is doing in 1958 in the city. Uh, next, we have uh, this uh, rather kind of more ancient looking document, but it talks about the company. Now this talks about the company very, very broadly in all of its uh, iterations. So it's not just focusing, you see they're talking about their sixth anniversary and, uh, oh, and it says in 1998, but uh, it talks about all of these companies, right? So Hamilton, Montreal, the Canada Screw Works, which is the Brantford part. Um, so obviously, you know, this is not just a, a, a one uh, community industry. This is, uh, this is a, a large, large company. So uh, some, of, some of it doesn't uh, relate to here. So we're not really gonna focus on that because we'll find uh, things out uh, in other uh, places. So uh, next we have some things from uh, products from the company, advertisements. 
Uh, so these are from the 70s, late 70s, uh, just talking about their products and what they make, what types of fasteners they use, the types of products. More screws. Obviously you need some bolts. This looks uh, kind of interesting. It looks like uh, the blown up images uh, under uh, a microscope and like heat treatments for, uh, for different types of steel. So that's kind of uh, neat and interesting. Some of the different threaded kind of materials that they make. So this was a, a project actually initiated by the Brantford Chamber and uh, two kind of people in the community, Janet Kempster and Gary Muir. So in this, they're talking about in 1985, producing a historical book about the city uh, to kind of showcase things. So uh, they are, uh, trying to kind of solicit and make sure that they have enough funding sources for the book. And they also talk uh, within it, because it's a bunch of pages, about some of the history that they kind of want to include. Some 150 period modern photos, period of modern photos, maps, drawings, and paintings. So, uh... So they're looking to get some support from some of the other businesses in the production of this book. So uh, we must know by October 17th uh, about uh, whether you want to participate in this. So uh, Stilco gets off uh, very early on this and uh, they say, oh, we've uh, already provided uh, a history of our of our company, one at the 25 years and the other at our 50th year anniversary. So then this gives us the actual history of Stelco and the steel companies in, in Brantford. So uh, it talks here uh, in 1898, similar to uh, GF Stern from last week, uh, an independent small business on Delusie Street for the manufacture of and stocking of bolts, nuts, rivets, screws, and other types of fasteners. So uh, they talk about the two Chal Crafts um, starting this company and renaming it the Chal Craft Screw Company. After two years of prosperity, the company uh, ran into some problems at the turn of the century, 1900. And and uh, so they, uh, the directors took prompt action and a new company, the Brantford Screw Company was formed with Lloyd Harris uh, as one of its first directors of the Steel Company of Canada. So uh, this uh, then uh, secured things. They were able to build a new factory here in 1906 and uh, they continued through and merged with the Canada Bolt and Nut Company in 1909. And then finally, the following year, they become uh, the Steel Company of Canada, later shortened to Stalco. Um, so because they also are part of the war effort, they're making steel products, so these things are needed in the war effort. So the plant essentially uh, expands and uh, to provide additional capacity that they need in this crisis. Um, and so they continue to kind of improve things in the company uh, through to World War II. And then in the 40s, they started installing high-tech equipment, automatic threaders. So before that, they would have uh, presumably had to be manually threaded all of the screws and that would take quite some time. So that gives us a really, really kind of good sense of, of st 
Delco and their company's history in Brantford. As well here, they have um, uh, a, a rather poor, because it's a photocopy, but uh, aerial view of the works in October of 59. So, uh, so you get that uh, sense of what the, the company looked like uh, there. So uh, we, we have to talk again about the, why they're making this book and why are they uh, contacting businesses for this? So uh, we see this letter here that they receive uh, in, in May um, talking about this proposal, a book written about Brantford's history and they really want to focus 25 Brantford Industries in the book, and it would cost $2,500 for uh, a page. Um, and 18 businesses have already, have already confirmed that they would be willing to participate in this. So with this, they uh, have a discussion on the book, and they talk about the reasons for the book, uh, promoting Brantford, conveying free enterprise and a uh, trip for subscribers, uh, reasons to, to uh, participate, avoid disappointing employees, support the community, and a good giveaway. And they note that $2,500 is not a bad deal, and it's about uh, $18 per copy. So they're seeing this as like a promotional investment, an investment in the community. So uh, they kind of seem like they are very eager to participate. So when you're publishing a book, you need a publisher to be able to do this. So uh, um, where did they get some of these ideas from? Well, we see here this advertisement for a book about St. John's and a similar little uh, model here we see um, companies helping support the production of the book. We get photographs from people. Um, so they also produce something very similar for Brantford. Here it is. So they have kind of the proposed cover of the book and then on the back limited edition with photos from the museum and all kinds of sponsors as well. So uh, in helping promote the book, they're talking about why uh, this is a good model uh, to promote the history and uh, support the community. So uh, here are some of the companies that kind of uh, participate with that. Here we see uh, a big long list of lots of brand brand companies like S.E. Johnson, Rogers, uh, Trailmobile, things like that, uh, that are uh, participating in this. So they also have uh, agreed to participate and now they need to confirm the proof of what is to appear in the book. So again, here is kind of that rough history that we talked about from that earlier document. And then in the center, there's a photo. And so they have a modern photo of, of the works there. Here is one of the, the letters that they write uh, from these uh, to the company and from the president of the chamber talking about uh, their appreciation for uh, writing uh, the book. And as one of the selected participants in the book and how they're going to, uh, going to do that. So finally, I guess we should talk about the actual book. So this is the book that is produced because of this. Uh, and uh, this book is from our library, so it has been well used and well loved over the years. 
um, and it talks about the different different themes or series within the city at the time, going uh, right back to Joseph Brand and that kind of early history, Massey Harris, Mohawk Park, the, um, Joseph Brand, the uh, silver at the Mohawk Chapel there, and then uh, it goes right through to kind of uh, a lot of the early uh, photos, Peter Adams and his works there. So uh, Charles Sleeman, police chief at one time, the opening of uh, Central School, the laying of the cornerstone, the expositor, modern pictures of what the city looks like now. There's our general store. Uh, looks fairly similar, but there's a couple things in the front there that are quite different, so, uh, and interesting. The Gretzky Center and City Hall. Some of our, uh, women founders that helped contribute. Wayne Gretzky. The opening of the City Hall. And then in the back are the companies and the company histories. So uh, kind of kind of interesting to kind of highlight all the different Brantford manufacturers. And of course, uh, Stalco will be in here somewhere along with Calbex, yeah. And Ludlow's clothing. So it's kind of a neat little uh, snapshot of Brantford in the 80s and Agnew Shoes. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's the history, kind of, of Stelco. So we learned quite a bit about... No. So we learned quite a bit about the Steel Company of Canada today. We learned about the earliest history of the company in Brantford starting in 1898 as the Chalcraft Screw Company. And uh, after that, in the early 1900s, a series of problems that the company ran into with a series of uh, amalgamations to form the Steel Company of Canada. We saw as well the publication that they were involved with uh, promoting their the history of Brantford and working with the Chamber of Commerce in 1985. So thanks for joining us for season two of Archival Discoveries. We hope you were able to learn a lot more about Brantford's history.